This one is a question from a person that lives in Canada and in the wintertime they're concerned about having their dog wear either a prong collar or an e-collar and they want to know if that's okay in a cold climate. I'll read it and I grew up in Canada so I know a little bit about that. I'm an American but I grew up outside of Toronto and came down to the United States, been here ever since. But here's what they said. We've been primarily using prong collars with our pups since early spring. We live in Canada and a part of Canada that gets extremely cold. They can relate to that. One of the dogs is a big powerful guy who we're working with through reactivity problems. The prong has been a great tool for this dog. I was thinking today that the cold metal might not be the best idea in the winter. And I believe a plastic pinch may become too fragile with these cold temperatures that we have. Maybe. Probably not good for an e-collar's batteries either. It can get down to minus 50 degrees Celsius. That's really cold. But normally it's about 90 minus 20 <laughs> for a few months in the wintertime. And I remember that too. Obviously, we wouldn't be walking our dog in 50 below, but just to paint the picture of what we live in, would you suggest moving <laughs> towards something like a slip lead or a dominant dog collar? We've used a slip in the past with very little success. Would you suggest going back to the basics of understanding leash pressure if we switch tools? That's a legitimate question. Are there any other tools as options that you could think of. So thank you in advance. We're sorry this is a long question. Cindy's got a good point too, and she thanks him for asking the question. Because sometimes we just take so much stuff for granted that we do with our dogs after 50 some years of doing it. We use uh, prong collars and we use remote collars on us, our dogs, all the time, all year around. And we live in uh, Wisconsin, and like this morning, it's in, when is it here? It's in early November here, and it was 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It was freezing cold, and we have snow on the ground already. But we leave the prong collar, and I mean, we train with the prong collar. We train with remote collars all year long. The only thing is, we don't leave, we never will leave a prong collar on a dog 24-7. We just don't do that. If there's a need to take it off and that dog needs a collar on, we'll put a dominant dog collar on it. We'll put one of our Amish leather, leash, leather collars on it. We take our remote collars off every night. In the cold weather, we plug them in overnight. I have a habit, and I don't think it's what the manufacturers recommend. It's what I do. I take my collars off, I plug them in, and I leave them overnight, and I I can look on the transmitter. I use Dogtra collars. In my opinion, the Dogtra collars are hands down the best collar that's made. I like on the transmitter, I can see the level of the battery. I wish there was something on, a, on the uh, remote collars that you could look at a remote collar before you even put it on. I'm waiting for them to figure out how to do that. In today's age, it wouldn't be that hard. Just my opinion. I get up in the morning for even our little dogs because I have a 13-year-old uh, Border Terrier, Stella, that I love, love, love. And Rosie, my eight-year-old, my eight-year-old Shih Tzu that I love, love, love. And here it is me having bred really tough working line German Shepherds for 35 years. I get up in the morning, I put those collars on because when I take them outside, Stella will say, I think it's more important to go over there when I'm over here saying, Stella, hurry up. Go potty, go poop. I want to go over there for a little while. I don't stimulate them. I don't need to stimulate my dogs. I just give them a little vibration nick, not, a not, a, not an electric nick, a, a vibration nick, and that's all it takes. And, but if I don't have that on them, on Stella anyway, it's, yeah, I'll come when I think about it. I think that's the nature of, of Border Terriers, most of them anyway. So that's the point. I think that using and transitioning from a prong collar or a remote collar 
to a dominant dog collar, that's kind of a big step. And I'm not sure that I would say, hey, my dog does need a remote collar. I think you need to learn how to use a dominant dog collar correctly, and this isn't the place for me to talk about that. So I would just stick with saying, yeah, you can still use it all winter long. So in closing this out, um, if you're new, and it sounds like this person is new to dog training, I would point you to the DVD that I did, and it's a DVD and an online course and a stream titled Remote Collar Training for the Pet Owner. We also have a number of different types and styles of prong collars on Learbird.com. I would point you right to the Ask Cindy portal. If you have a question and you don't know where you should be going with your dog and you don't want to guess and waste money on your training tools, write Cindy. Give her enough information, she'll answer your question. You don't have to be, uh, you don't have to be a customer yet. I hope you become one of Learbird. Cindy will answer your questions on training and on behavioral problems.